Hi friends, welcome back to our Control Systems Simplified series. Today we shall discuss on polar plots and draw a polar plot with an example. Now, the polar plot basically represents the transfer function of the system in the complex, on a complex plane, the, when the transfer function of the system is g of j omega and constructed in polar coordinates, because we are co constructing this in polar coordinates, we call it as a polar plot, basically. So it is a plot of magnitude versus phase angle on polar coordinates with variation in omega from omega zero to infinity. When the angular frequency is varying from zero to infinity, we are plotting magnitude versus uh, phase angle on polar coordinate. So when we draw this, we call it as a polar plot. That's all. That's the only uh, uh, difference. Now, this polar plot is basically used for understanding the stability of the control systems. Then if you want to draw the uh, polar plot, well, we need to understand that frequency response refers to the drawing the variations in magnitude and phase angle with respect to the input frequency. Okay, so with, with respect to the input frequency, if we understand how the magnitude and phase angle are varying, then that's what we normally call it as a frequency response. And when you, we know the magnitude gain plot, we call it as a magnitude plot and phase plot. And as we have already seen, both plot refers to the frequency response using a logarithmic scale, whereas a polar plot refers to a drawing between the magnitude and phase angle of the transfer function for different values of omega, okay? So this is done in simple scale, not on a logarithm. So same values, we draw it on a logarithm scale, we call it as a board plot. We draw it with polar coordinates, we call it as a polar plot. That's all, there is not much of a difference. So if M represents the magnitude and phi denotes the phase angle, so the transfer function of the system M is equal to modulus of G of J omega into H of J omega. And phase angle is given by angle of G of J omega into H of J omega. So with the variation in omega angular frequency from zero to infinity, the values of magnitude and phi can be determined for different values, okay? So now if you take a hypothetical polar plot, drawn the different values of magnitude and phase angle for particular angular frequency of omega, you will see for zero frequency, magnitude is M naught, phi naught, phase angle is phi naught. For omega one, this is M one and phi one. For omega two, for infinity, this is mag m infinity and phi infinity. So if you try to plot the, uh, from this table, for omega is equal to, we have seen, m1 is a, a angle of phi one, okay? So in this, if, if, if it represents m1 angle phi one, m1 is the magnitude and phi one is the phase angle. So the magnitude versus phase angle plot can be constructed for various values of omega and magnitude and phase angle like this. So the anti-clockwise direction, anti-clockwise direction represents positive phase angles, while the clockwise direction shows the negative phase angle. So the conversion of magnitude into decibels or logarithm values is not necessary here. We can straight away take simple values. So this is exactly what we, so from this we will see, this is a real axis and this is an imaginary axis of a polar plot. Okay, then we are angle, this is P naught, P1, P2, P infinity, up to this. So these are all the points if we are given. Now, we, if we want to calculate the angle, we calculate from this phi naught, from this phi one, from this phi two, from this phi infinity, up to P infinity you are going, you are going as phi infinity. Uh, up to P naught point, we are taking phi naught. Okay, so this is the uh, magnitude uh, we will get, and this is the phase angle on the from, we will always start from the real axis. So if we do anti-clockwise, we take it as a positive. If we go clockwise, we take it as a negative. That's exactly what we uh, understand. Now let's take a, uh, let's understand this. Polar plot is started from a point specifying magnitude or where omega is equal to zero, and is terminated at a point specifying magnitude and angle for omega is equal to infinity. Another method is used to roughly sketch the polar plot in which magnitude and angles for the various values of omega are calculated. So here you are seeing, 
this is another uh, method where n1 is the magnitude for phi1, n2 is the magnitude for phi2. So from x to y, if it is going, phi2 minus phi1 is the phase angle difference. So movement from x to y causes the angle rotation phi2 minus phi1. If the difference is negative, then the rotation will be in the clockwise direction in this. If the difference is positive, the rotation will be in the anti-clockwise direction. That is in this case. So it is from it is from y to x, this is a clockwise. From x to y, this is a uh, anti-clockwise direction. So if phi2 minus phi1 is negative, then we are moving from this in this direction, clockwise direction. Okay, if it is positive, we are moving from x to y. That's the what way. So the variation in omega from zero to infinity, zero to infinity, two points can be considered. One at omega is equal to zero. This here you will see omega is equal to zero. The magnitude m naught and phi naught, while the other at omega is equal to infinity, where magnitude and phi is at infinity. So then there will be a rotation from phi naught minus phi. So if we have phi two minus phi one here it is moving from zero to infinity, then the difference of rotation will be phi infinity minus phi naught. Now let's understand this with an example. We have a type zero system with a transfer function g of s is equal to one by one plus s. This is a typical uh, transfer function. And uh, first we have to convert this transfer function into frequency domain, where we uh, do it with, by substituting g of j omega. So we get one by one plus j omega. So one we always consider if we want to convert into real and imaginary g of j omega nothing but one plus j zero by one plus j omega. Okay. Now further if you calculate the magnitude of g of j omega into h of j omega magnitude is nothing but one by one plus omega square. Here one square plus zero square is equal to root of one we will get one only but here you will get square root of one plus omega square. Okay, this is the gain magnitude. So the phase angle condition is equal to tan inverse of um, minus zero by one. This is one plus J zero. So we get tan inverse of zero by one. And here tan inverse of omega by one. So phi is equal to, so phi is equal to zero by tan inverse of infinity. So phi becomes the, when this tan inverse goes top, we call minus tan inverse of omega. So the angle of G of J omega into H of J omega phi phase angle here is equal to minus tan inverse of omega. Now we have for magnitude, M is nothing but one by square root of one plus omega square. For phase angle, we have tan inverse minus tan inverse of omega. So for these two values, we draw a polar plot for different values of omega. And this is what we have to calculate the magnitude angle. So let's calculate the magnitude and angle by substituting different values of omega between zero and infinity. So we are seeing here for zero, magnitude is one. For zero here, if you see omega is equal to zero, we get magnitude as one. And for zero, phase angle is, if you see, phase angle is minus tan inverse of zero. So tan inverse of zero is zero minus zero, zero is zero degrees. So for omega is equal to one, we calculate one by square root of one plus omega square, we get one by square root two as magnitude. Phase angle is minus tan inverse of omega is equal to 45. So we have minus 45 degrees. So for frequency of 10, we have one by square root of one at one, this is minus 84.2. So if we go on calculating the at infinity, so one by uh, anything is infinity is zero. And here minus tan inverse of infinity is minus 90. So this is exactly uh, what we get. So these values we represent it on the, this is X axis is real axis. Y axis is imaginary axis. Now we start from, let's say zero frequency. This is a, a frequency is zero uh, here. And magnitude is one on this magnitude is one and phase angle is zero, phase angle is zero, okay? So this is one point, okay? And then second point is frequency is one, we are getting here, frequency is one. 
then magnitude is 1 by uh, square root we get 1 by uh, uh, root 2 right angle is 45 minus 45 degrees this is the minus 45 degrees okay and then this next one 10 frequency is 10 frequency uh, for a frequency of 10 we get magnitude 1 by square root of 101 and phase angle minus 84.2 so here minus 84.2 this is what we get okay so this is the magnitude we will uh, get it here this in this line okay and then up to infinity we have a magnitude is zero here and phase angle is minus 90. This is the phase angle. So in this phase angle, it is joining at minus 90. So if we draw the, all these points, okay, we get a, and this is a, all these minus degrees. So we get a clockwise rotation, clockwise rotation here. So this is exactly the polar plot, which we are drawing it for different values. You can explain this. Uh, with a simple example of 1 by 1 plus s yes of a uh, transfer function. And uh, for omega is tending to 0 here, and um, omega is tending to infinity, we are getting to 0 here. Okay, So this is about the uh, polar plots. Right? Hope you have understood it. Thank you very much for watching. Keep watching.